Well, I guess my new name should be Nostradamus, much like Nostradamus. I can predict the future, especially if it's bad. And I told you this is going to happen with Evergrande. And all y'all thought I was kidding. I told you, once we get to the dollar-denominated debt payments, then we're going to see what's the real story. Because the local Chinese payments, you can make go away quite easily. You can plaster that shit away. No problem. You can cover it up. But when it comes to the foreign money, well, then you actually have to pay. And they had to pay. Two coupons, $83 million, not a lot of money for a company like Evergrande. And of course, they finally defaulted after even the grace period passed. These guys didn't even pick up the phone when the credit rating agency Fitch called them to ask what's up. Can you imagine how bad it is? Now, the worst part about it is this failure is about to trigger an automatic default on $19 billion of other debt this was supposed to protect. Speaking about Fitch, they actually didn't even get an answer from the company what's going on. They have to assume that this thing was not paid because these guys are literally docking their phone calls. Now, Fitch obviously downgraded the company to restrict the default, which is about to send the whole Chinese property market into a spiral. It's about to get real nasty. Okay, so first of all, you need to understand that this 19 billion I just mentioned that's going to get automatically defaulted because of this failure to pay is just a drop in the ocean. They still owe the Evergrande. $300 billion they obviously can repay, and that's going to have a collateral effect on the entire Chinese property market. And as evidence, I can tell you that on the same day we had the Evergrande News, Kaisa Group were also downgraded by the same Fitch. I don't know if somebody picked up their calls here for missing a $400 million bond payment. Now, their default puts another $11 billion for automatic triggering for default, which means this is just the first episode of a multi-seasonal series. This is just a preview. But if you watch my channel, you knew this shitstorm is coming. Well, that is unless you're mainstream media or Ray Dalio, who claims China is about to take over the world. Give me a break. So the real question at this point is what the Chinese government is about to do about this cluster freak, because it's a big problem. They have two options, really. None of them is really good. One is to let it burn. Two is to bail them out. Now, yesterday, the head of the Chinese central bank, I don't remember his name, let's call him, oh my God, we're fucked, came out and said, well, we're not going to bail out Evergrande nor Kaisa. We're going to let the market completely shred them to pieces because it's their fault. Now, the reason they said there's not going to be a bailout is because of three reasons, which I'm going to break down right here, because you need to understand why they're saying this. It ain't because they're nice. Number one, it's a political reason. They don't want to appear weak in front of the Chinese people. If they bail out bad bankers that fucked up, they're pretty much the same thing as they're preaching against. They're behaving like the US, which they, you know, they like to preach how the US has basically failed with dealing with these sort of crises. But that's the least of these reasons. The real reasons are actually coming up right now. Reason number two, basically, we're having a situation here of epic proportions. This is a Christmas party. Right now, the only ones who are about to get screwed by this is the foreign bond holders mainly U.S. bondholders. You know what uh, the U.S. bondholders have? Um, their balls. It's the only thing they can hang on to at this point because they have no bargaining power with the Chinese government. Remember when I told you this? How if you invest in China, you have no bargaining power? This is exactly what's going on right now. China's decided to let the foreign bondholders jump on the grenade. and There's nothing they can do about it. They're getting suckered. And that's pretty much what happens when you go to bed with dogs. Don't be surprised when you wake up with fleas. I told you this about China. They can't play by their own rules and they ain't a goddamn thing in this world you can do about it. Now, there's a third reason, which is actually kind of interesting, and it has to do a lot with what's going on in China. It's basically the same thing that happens with Alibaba and Didi. The Chinese government would love to weaken the corporate strength of these mega corporations because they're getting too strong. That's why they took apart Didi. That's why they're chipping away at Alibaba. That's why they had it out with Jack Ma. They don't want corporations to become too strong, like a Facebook or a Google or an Amazon in the US. They want to keep them at bay. And Evergrande, which was one of the biggest players on the Chinese market, is about to handle the problem for them. They ain't get to do shit. All they got to do is wait for the pieces to fall. Foreign bond holders are going to get screwed. And they're going to break it apart to a million different small companies, completely eliminating the power that Evergrande had. Win-win for everybody if you're the Chinese Communist Party. And in other news, surprise, surprise, I hope you're preparing the shocked face 
Pfizer just let everybody know the fourth booster shot will probably be relevant and needed. So I'm assuming by 2025, we're going to be on our 174th booster shot for the drunk grandpa virus. Pretty much this shit ain't never going to end. How many booster shots you guys want us to have? I mean, at this point, we're about to go cyberpunk 2077. The hell is going on? Now, I do want to also mention Lucid. Shout out to Lucid with the SEC subpoena. But hey, 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 Tesla also got one, so chill. So, not that I'm comparing Lucid to Tesla. It's comparing a fart to a car. But Lucid are raising another $1.75 billion in convertibles. Essentially meaning that this money is going to be converted to shares, diluting all y'all. Now, basically, $1.75 is pretty much the amount of cars they put out in the market. I'm, just, I'm joking. I'm joking. I know they put out more cars. I don't exactly know how much. What, like 20, 30, 50, 100 cars? It's still kind of a nice number per car. Uh, yeah, a company just keep raising money, uh, doesn't really deliver vehicles, and just really all about the hype. Not a fan, but you know what? Lucid, prove me wrong. Now, I do want to mention Credit Suisse are actually coming out and saying, well, we think our investors should expose themselves less to China. Reduce your Chinese exposure because China is a risky investment. They're saying this in November 2021. No shit, Sherlock. Now you're saying this after Didi, after Alibaba, after Evergrande. I love how these banks make it seem as if they know what the hell they're talking about with their research and resources, letting you all know that China is fucking risky after we've been screaming about this for a whole year. Now, talking about things we've been screaming about for a whole year, on January 2021, I put out a video saying, well, Apple at $132, $103 is a good price. I think they're undervalued. And I gave a target price of 163 essentially saying, I think it's about $30 undervalued. Now, lo and behold, we're right here at $175, so way over my target price. And now, finally, Morgan Stanley comes out and says, well, we think Apple is a good investment. No shit, Sherlock, point two. What the hell? Now, at 175 sure, it's a good company, and sure, it can go up probably higher. I don't know. But I mean, are you kidding me? Now you're seeing this? By the way, shout out to our Patreon members who actually got this news in January, unlike right now in November, and made a 32% profit. And by the way, if you want to join our Patreon, you know, the link is going to be below in our description section. You can go right ahead and join. It's $5 per month, pretty much the price of a coffee per month for being a part of our community, Zoom calls, you know, stock analysis, and overall supporting the channel. So why not? If you want to watch my video on Apple in January, where I told you that this is an undervalued stock. Just to see, I wasn't blowing smoke up your ass. The video is going to be right here. Go check it out. Tell me what you think, and I'll see you right there. Before you check out, make sure you do subscribe right here. It's Christmas, almost Christmas. How about a Christmas subscribe? I'll see you tomorrow.